You might know that the voltages that we get from our socket in our houses is an alternating voltage. But I was very curious when I saw that in India, the voltage that we get is 230 volts. I was thinking, hey, the voltage is fluctuating, right? It's, it's continuously changing. So what does this 230 volt represent? At first I thought, obviously, it must represent the peak value. That's what it means. But then I was surprised to see that that's wrong. That's not what it represents. In fact, it turns out that it represents something called the RMS value. And the goal of this video is to figure out what exactly is this RMS value and why should we care about it? So let's start by looking at a situation. Imagine I pass an alternating current through a bulb. So let's say we are passing a current that is fluctuating between some peak value I naught and minus I naught. Then we know that current passing through any resistor, which is inside the bulb over here, dissipates power, generates heat. And because the current is fluctuating, the heat generated or the power dissipated also fluctuates. When the current is zero, the power dissipated over here would be zero. And when the current uh, increases and goes all the way to maximum, the power dissipated over here, which I'll show as the brightness of the bulb, will also increase and go all the way to maximum. So as the current fluctuates, the power dissipated also fluctuates. But here's the thing. In India, this fluctuation is happening about 50 times per second. And as a result, the fluctuations are happening so fast, our eyes will not be able to make that out. Instead, you know what we will see? We will see not the maximum power, not zero, not the fluctuations, but we will see some kind of an average power or average brightness somewhere between maximum and zero. So what our eyes will end up seeing and what I'm denoting over here is the average power that is being dissipated in this resistor due to this alternating current. All right, now let's say I take that same bulb and pass a direct current through it, DC, constant current, not alternating, okay? then that's also going to dissipate some power over here. But the power dissipated over here, which I'm gonna call the DC power, the power dissipated over here, DC power, this power will be a constant. So we don't have to talk about average values over here because the current is a constant, the power dissipated over here is a constant. And now here's my question, okay, ready for this? My question is, what should be the value of this DC current such that the power dissipated over here is exactly equal to the average power that's dissipated over here. I repeat, what current should you send over here says that the constant power that you find over here equals the average power that you are getting over here due to the alternating current. Did you get that question? Let's do a quick sense check because it's not a very straightforward question. I used to get confused a lot. So let's take an example. Imagine the current that is alternating over here is alternating between say 10 amperes and minus 10 amperes. That's the peak value, let's say. Okay, and as a result of that, the power will also fluctuate between some maximum and zero. Now my question to you is, the DC current that I need to send over here, so as to get the same power as the average power here, do you think that current should be equal to 10 amperes? More than 10 amperes? Or less than 10 amperes? Can you pause the video and think a little bit about that? Okay, let's see. What would happen if I were to send 10 amps of current over here? Well, 10 amps represents the peak value of the current over here. When, when the current is 10 amps, the power dissipated over here would be maximum. And what you're seeing now is not the maximum power. What you're seeing now is the average power. So if you were to send 10 amps of current in this example, the bulb would be glowing with maximum power. And so that would not be equal to the average power. Therefore, the current that you need to send over here should be less than 10 amps. Does that make sense? But how much exactly? Would it be five amps? Well, that's ex we'll, we'll not guess, but that's what we want to find out. And you may be wondering why we need to find this out. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the question now is, how do I figure out what that current should be, what this current should be? Well, the way I like to do this is we already know how to calculate power in any circuit. We know that the power, power dissipated, at least through resistors, we can always write that to be equal to because current is given I square R. So we can say it is the I DC square times R, where R is the resistance of this bulb. All right, and we want this to equal the average power dissipated over here. And so the question now is, how do I calculate the average power that's dissipated over here? Well, we can try calculating the average just like we always do. So over here, since the current is changing, 
at every point there is some value for current and so there'll be some value of power at each point. So we can add up all those powers and divide by n and that was, that'll give us the average power. Don't worry, we don't have to actually do it, it's just the concept that is what matters. So here's how I'm thinking. So let's say here are some points that I've marked. So at this point, uh, the power would be I1 squared R, at this point it'll be I2 squared R and so on and so forth. You take all those power values, add them up, divide by n, that gives you the average power. And I want you to, to pause the video and see if you can equate that to this and see what expression you end up for IDC. Then you might be able to rediscover why this is called the RMS value yourself. So hopefully you're excited and pumped to give this a try. All right. So this should equal the average power and average is just adding up individual powers at every instant and dividing by n. There are infinite values actually. So with the P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4 up to Pn and then divide all of that by n. And like I said, there are actually infinite values and you can't really do it this way. You have to do an infinite summation which is called an integral. But don't worry about all of that. We're not actually going to calculate what the average power is going to be over here. We just want to understand the concept and therefore we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so this would equal what? Well, P1 would equal the power decimated at this point, that'll be I1 squared. So that'll be I1 squared times R. That's the power dissipated at this point in time. Plus P2 would be power dissipated at this point in time. So that would be I2 squared. I2 squared times R and it keeps going on. You divide this whole thing by N. Okay, our goal is to figure out what IDC is, right? So from these two equations, you can see R can be pulled out and you, you have, R is common and you can cancel R on both sides. I'm not gonna do that. I'm sure we can do that in our head. And therefore, what do we end up with? We end up with, if you cancel R on both sides, IDC squared ends up being I1 squared plus I2 squared and so on, whole thing divided by N. But I want IDC, so I'm gonna take square root on both sides. So if I take square root on both sides, I will end up with the square root of I1 squared plus I2 squared and so on divided by N. And that's how you calculate the current needed to give the same power as the average power over here. Now, the question is, what should we give a name to this? You can call it as IDC, but it doesn't tell you much. It just tells you it's a constant current. But what should we name this? And this is where uh, we name it based on what we are doing over here. So what we're doing is we're taking a square root. So we put an R, we're taking a root. Root of what? Root of, what is this operation called when you add things up and divide by N? Hey, that's, that's average or mean. So we're taking the root of mean of, mean of what? What are you adding and then dividing by n? Oh, currents, not currents, square of the currents. Oh, why are we adding the square of the currents? Well, that's because when you calculate power, you get a current square. So we are doing root of, mean of, square of the currents. That's what this is and that's why this is called IRMS, let me just write it a little small. That's why this is called the RMS value. And so the power dissipated over here, I can just say is IRMS squared times R. And since this power is the same as the average power over here, I can now say that the average power dissipated due to any alternating current through a resistor equals the IRMS squared times R. And this is why we love RMS values. Because if you give me the complete alternate, uh, you know, the alternating current function with the peak value and the frequency and all of that, calculating average power is a nightmare. You have to actually go ahead and do this calculation. And this will require integral as we spoke about earlier. But if you give me directly the RMS value, I'd say thank you, thank you. Because all I have to do now, I don't care about alternating currents, I don't care about the fluctuations, I don't care about anything. I just take I square uh, RMS times R and I get my average power. And of course, we could have done the same thing in terms of voltage. And so if you want to calculate the average power in terms of voltage, we can just do V squared by R, but the voltage we take is the RMS value of the voltage. So I can also say this equals, I'm running out of space over here, but we can also call this as V RMS squared 
divided by r. Everything is similar. And now we can come back to that original question. The reason why the voltage rating is given as the RMS value for us is because now if we attach some say resistor across it and we want to calculate the average power, there's also an alternating current, power is fluctuating. But if I want to calculate the average power, I say, ha, I have the RMS value. So I'm just gonna do V square over R. Now finally, you may have a question, what if RMS values are not given to us? Not all questions are nice to us, right? What if they give you, say, a current function with the peak value and they give you the frequency and all of that, but they don't give you the RMS value? Then how do you calculate the average power? Well, then you have to calculate the RMS value first. And it turns out, if you do this for sinusoidal currents and sinusoidal voltages, you will see that RMS value happens to be the peak value divided by root two. The same thing will be true for voltages as well. VRMS happens to be the peak value V naught divided by root two. And if you're wondering where is this coming from, we have to actually go ahead and solve this and we will do that. We will derive this expression in a future video and in fact, there is a logical way of doing it as well. We'll do that. We will get to that in a future video. But remember, this is only true if you take sinusoidal currents and voltages because there can be other kinds of alternating currents and voltages, like they can be, you have triangular waves or you can have sawtooth or square waves. So many different kinds are available. And for each one, the RMS value would be different. So in our case, we can use this formula because we are dealing with sinusoids. So in our case, if we calculate what the RMS value is, this is the RMS value, okay? It happens to be I naught divided by root two, 10 divided by root two, and that turns out to be close to seven amperes. So long story short, RMS value represents that constant current, which gives you the same power as the average power due to the alternating current. You calculate it as the root of the mean of the squares of all the currents at every instance of time. And why we love it so much is because to calculate average power, if you have the RMS values, you can just do I square R or V square over R.